Welcome to the Apex, everyone. I'm your host, Zell, and we're going to get right into the week's news right after I tell you where to get the show notes. They are down in the description, but that's kind of them yeah, as good as YouTube's description will let me do for show notes. But if you go over to the apexnews.com, pick... Click on show notes at the top of the screen, top right, I believe. And then there is a whole list of all the show notes from all the Apexes that we've done since we've had the website up. And uh, very easy to read. And the best part is, is whoever the highlighted content is for the week, you can watch their video right there. You don't even have to, you know, click on anything. It's You, gotta, you might have to click play, but that's it. And then you can see old Nick Shabazz. Yeah, he got on the highlighted content thing again. And I know you guys told me. I heard about it in the comments, in the various other internet communication ways that Nick Shabazz doesn't need to be in the highlighted comment. Well, here's the deal. I get to pick who is in the highlighted content. And whenever Nick Shabazz says big honking knife enough times that if I were playing one of those games, you know that uh, I wouldn't have been able to stand up afterwards, then I got my 12 minutes worth or whatever it is out of the video, and he gets the highlighted content thing. Because, I mean, really, big honking knife? Come on, Nick. Uh, I know, you like small knives, but you have a Norseman? Doesn't make sense. Uh, I carry this. This is another Leong Ma knife. It's an XV. It's bigger than the Endeavor. Uh, just got this in the other day from Leong Ma Designs. This is the Eraser, also bigger than the Endeavor. And uh, I carry those regularly. And then he says that one of Leong's smaller knives is a big honking knife. Well, maybe it is in Nick's world. And he does say that, uh, you know, it's all perception or all uh, what your choice is. But the number of times he said it just struck me funny. So... That's why Nick's there. Moving on along to blog and print, Enrique Pena is bringing more knives to production. And guys, I have heard the rumblings about this. We are getting, from what I understand, more Enrique Pena knives. And what I'm being told is they're going to be good. So, you know, it's all rumor and that kind of stuff right now, except for what you're going to read over there on Knife News. And... But it, man, it sounds good. It sounds really good. I can't say any more, but it is sounding really good. And then we have SOG readying their XR lock for release. And I really don't know much about this lock system. Uh, it appears that since Benchmade, uh, their patent ran out on the uh, Axis lock or the McHenry and Williams lock, then that uh, there are several companies trying to modify, change, one up, and repatent in some way that style of lock, uh, which is not unusual. I mean, a Spider Co. holds at least one patent on a lock that style. There's another one that uh, Spider Co. licenses or uses. I don't know how it all works out legally. That's another similar lock design. You got the Manix 2, and then you've got a bolt lock. And, you know, and then we also have bench made within different version of uh, their access lock. So it's interesting to me to see everyone scrambling, trying to figure out how they're going to do this. We even has their own with the, uh, oh, they're, they're calling it a slider lock, or uh, I don't remember what the other name for it was. I remember slider lock because I didn't like that name. But uh, anyhow, there's can lock closed, which is uh, kind of super cool for some people. Obviously not very cool for a mo vocal minority, but because uh, they were all over me and everybody else that reviewed the knife fussing about it. Uh, but it's just kind of cool to see all of the makers and all the designers and all the companies out there scrambling, trying to figure out what the new thing's going to be. I like it. And then from the Cutting Edge blog, we have knife myths. Dull knives are sh safer than sharp knives. You just want to go read that one. It's pretty good. And then in video, right here on the Zoric YouTube channel, we went over knife pivot lube, KPL. Now, this has been crazy, you guys. I didn't, in fact, I quit commenting on that video. 
and I did it for a reason. You guys were having too much fun. You didn't need me in there. Uh, to answer some of the questions, let's see. Is it a YouTuber that's doing it? Don't think so. It's definitely not this one. Uh, and I know it's not Nick, and I know it's not Nick, and I know, well, I know it's not a bunch of them, so there's not too many left. Uh, so I don't think it's a YouTuber, but I could be wrong. Uh, I have talked to the guy that does an iPivot lube, but I don't know specifically if he is a YouTuber or not. Uh, is it food safe? Here's the deal on food safe. Everyone makes this big, huge deal about food safe. Yeah, I hear it, and you guys are going to make a big deal down there in the comments about it too, because you're going to tell me I'm an idiot. But here's the deal. I have been using gun lubes. I have been using all kinds of other lube on my knife. The lube goes in the pivot, guys. You know, it goes in, uh, let me grab this eraser back here. It goes in there. It doesn't go here. If you're gonna put something there, then you use something that is food safe. But if you're putting it in the pivot, you use the stuff that makes pivot work right. Okay, so there's the food safe thing. No, it's not, to my knowledge, food safe. If you look over there on their website, they can they say that it's made from, I believe they say it's made from food safe stuff, but they can't call it food safe. So there you go. Uh, what were some of the others? Oh, there's a whole litany of things. Uh, tolerances versus, uh, I forget, but uh, yeah, you guys had fun with it. And it was great to read the comments, but whenever it gets down like that, guys, I'm just not going to get into it. Uh, also, one more thing before we move away from the Zellwerk YouTube channel. There were several people that posted up stuff about Mick Strider. Uh, we're talking about the knives, guys. We do not talk about the people who had problems behind the knives unless it is absolutely relevant to that piece of hardware. Uh, in the case of Mr. Strider, he has repented for his sins, and therefore we will not be talking about it here on this channel, and we will not be getting into the drama. If you want to do that, there are plenty of threads over on knife forums, and I understand that you feel like you're doing everyone a service by spreading that everywhere. Uh, if it was still a problem right now, I would not stop you, but since that is has been several years ago, and it's all said and done, apologies have been made, retractions, all that kind of stuff, we're not dealing with it. Uh, if you want to deal with it over on Blade Forums or wherever, that's fine, but not here. Here, we talk about the hardware. Uh, the knives themselves, the you know pins or knife lube or whatever else, but we're not gonna get into the drama. It's just too deep and I don't want to go there, so we're not going to. Now, moving on along to Slicey Dicey. He has the an open tag video for Unsung Heroes of Your Knife Collection. And now, let me tell you, here's what he's talking about, and I'll do my Unsung Hero right here. I don't need a whole video for it because it is right here in my pocket. And uh, <clears throat> the Tornox Rambler, you guys talk, all of you, talk a big game about this knife you carried for this long, that knife you carried for that long. Okay, well, I have been carrying one variant or another of this Rambler for 20 years now, more than 20 years. Uh, it is the knife that is always on me. I have had dozens of them. In fact, uh, you guys talk about my bowl. Let me reach back here to my... Okay, that's not even full right now, but... That is my bowl of uh, 58 millimeter Swiss Army knives. So there you go. The bowl exists. People thought I was joking. It's there. And that is my response to the unsung heroes. It's that knife right there. We also have some Delicas that are around here and some other Spider Co's that get regular use right here around the shop. Uh, Mantra. Uh, Dragonfly, Delicas, uh, even the little ones, the, oh, Ladybug and Manbug. They get used around the shop and around the house all the time. And we don't talk about them much because, well, who wants to talk about those little knives? 
Anyhow, Slicey Dicey also has the Rake P671CB front flipper. Uh, kind of a neat knife. He also has a 3,000 sub giveaway. Got some pretty nice prizes over there. You're going to want to check that out. And he also closes out with the Arson Cutlery Osprey. He's got the G10 model, which uh, Arson Cutlery is doing something cool. And I need to get a hold of Artisan and talk to them about looking at some of their knives. Because if they're making good knives, and I don't know this yet, but some people say they are, but I haven't had them in my hands. Most of their models, they're doing two or three levels of a knife. They'll do a G10 and D2 model, an S35VN model, and then maybe an M390 model. Uh, and it's... It's a pretty nice way where you can get the same ergonomics, the same design, same shapes in two, through two or four, to up to four different, I believe, uh, price points, which uh, is pretty cool in my opinion. And we also have, well, that's it. Go see what uh, Slicey's got in his giveaway. You're going to want to get in on that. And... Uh, Let's move on to Staza 23. And Staza this week has a Tangram Vector, a well-executed button lock. And yeah, that is kind of a cool knife. I should have got one of those to look at. He also has the Kershaw STP tool and the ZT609. So they finally got the tool out for the 609, which is really cool because Kershaw and uh, ZT Kai Industries, uh, they, Kai Industries owns both of those companies says that there are going to be more knives with that pivot setup. So it's a one time your few dollars for a pivot tool is not going to be for one specific knife. It's kind of like if you have several striders or several hinderers and you get the armor's tool. Well, you know, that's one tool for a bunch of different knives. Uh, not that big a deal. However, I do wish they had brought the tool out with the knives as having to wait for a number of people is BS. And Moving on along to Love Them Knives, we have the Best Tech Toucan. That dude is cool. I was kind of taken aback. I've got one over here uh, to end for review, and it's recurve, and it's big, funny-shaped blade is... Okay, I, I wanted to not like it. I really did. But as Love Them Knives will tell you, it's just a nice knife. And it makes me almost want to... Sharpen recurve, almost. And he's got the real steel, 3701. Uh, it says Crusader. <coughs> oh, wow. <coughs> Crusader frame lock. Uh, knife poltergeist works design. And the Medford Production Praetorian. We've seen that one a lot here lately. That's the one that Blade HQ sent through some of the pass around groups. And uh, it's an okay knife. It made me want to look more at the hard use knives probably not a full-size praetorian but i think whenever i go to blade show west here in a few weeks i am going to be visiting greg and i'm probably going to be looking at a micro praetorian because yeah i'm just i don't know it's this thing it, it gets you and and i don't know if i'll buy one from greg or not but I've got to go look now because the full-size Praetorian caught my interest, believe it or not. Go watch the video I did and be sure to go watch the one from Love Them Knives as well. And then Nick Shabazz, he had the uh, featured video this week with the Leong Ma Endeavor and he also has the Demco Knives AD15. This is another one of those interesting new lock designs that uh, you're going to want to go get a look at. He probably says Big Honkin' Knife in that video too. I'm almost betting he does. And EDC Gear Reviews brings us a Sharp by Designs Micro Typhoon. His first impressions and seven budget knives worth a spot in your EDC. And you know what? I really think that I goofed up there. You guys tell me, but I am betting whenever I did this, did this list up for myself that I missed and left those in from last week. But that's okay because EDC Gear Reviews always brings you good reviews. And if you missed them last week, watch them again this week. Blade Bander, he brings us the V-Knives Scuff. 
and he's got a giveaway subscribe and comment and what do you want to see from blade show west uh, blade banter will be at blade show west as will i i don't think nick is gonna make it uh, my brother seth the two of us being todd knife and tool will be there and we're gonna talk in fact we're just gonna stop right here anyhow let blade banter know what you want to see because he'll be a lot freer during the show to uh, do video and talk to people uh, for interview type things where Seth and I won't be. We'll be probably dealing with we and dealing with other companies and doing stuff besides just going out and doing interviews because well, that's what you do. Anyhow, I wanted to talk to you about something real quick. You may have seen it over on Instagram, but uh, there you go. There's your quick look at the malware. This is a Todd knife and tool design. We'll even run it up there. See, there, there, up there, there you go. That one is coming soon, within the next two or three months, to you guys from Todd knife and tool. And we'll let you in on the manufacturer very soon. Uh, and it is, uh, well, there you go. And this is a production prototype. There'll be a few changes from that one. I don't know if I'm going to do a whole video on that particular knife, but uh, it's... I'm imp impressed with how well they did with it. And Blade Center brings us a Medford Production Praetorian. We just talked about that guy. The Production Praetorian is pretty cool. And Eugene Kwan brings us the Ferrum Forge Knife Works Fortis 2.0. Uh, those are, from what I understand, pretty cool. I have not got one yet. Uh, I believe Shabazz has one headed my way, but uh, I haven't gotten it yet. We will get a look at it whenever it arrives. And Birdshot 4 has $20 and less knives. How bad does it get? I don't know. You'll have to go over and see what Frankie and Bird got to say about it. I think Frankie was a little obstinate in that one. But, you know, that's okay. All right. Kevin Cleary brings us the Master Rock Perpetua First Impressions. Uh, that's one we talked about a little earlier. And First Impressions of the Savivi Praxis. Knife Crazy brings us the Rike, Rake, excuse me, P801. And then he does some heat anodizing on that Rake P801. Got them both listed for your viewing pleasure. And JT's Knife Life brings us a 14-minute ramble about the Master Rock Perpetua. I don't know why he calls it a 14 plus minute ramble. Most knife reviews come in 10 to 15 minutes, so he's right in there. You'll have to go see what he's rambling about. And Canadian Cutting Edge, Jake is back. Guys, my glasses are just giving me crap today, aren't they? Uh, he has a review of the Cold Steel Con. And wasn't there like a Revenge of Con at some point? That was Star Wars, right? Let me know because if it, yeah, just let me know if I was right or wrong there. And we have a review of the Best Tech Spike. And uh, that Spike and the Beluga and a couple of those others, those are actually cool little knives. 12C27, so they're reasonably easy to sharpen. Fine grain steel holds an edge reasonably well. You know, it's not perfect, but reasonably well. And uh, easy to sharpen, well-built little knives. And very stainless compared to your D2 and some of the other knives at that price point. Anyhow, Walter Soils brings us a completely the opposite, a guide to tool steel for the knife maker. <laughs> and the Apostle P. Oh boy, Rob. From the sharpening bitch, the Rake P801SF. And I know, we have all seen videos on the P801SF. Many of us that are watching this video or me, you guys, have had a P801SF in your paws. Well, uh, this is Rob, the Apostle Pete. <sighs> Mr. Anti-Chinese, Mr. Taiwan separate from China, which it kind of is, but, and he's doing an FSB on a Chinese knife. Now, You'll want to go watch the video and listen to the first section of the video for sure because first off he will give you the reason that he 
feels like he doesn't need to uh, or doesn't want to review some of the Chinese knives that I review or Nick reviews or some of the other guys do. And uh, that's his prerogative. But if you'd like to know why you haven't seen a lot of reviews from the Apostle P in the past and recent times, that's a very good reason why. And uh, it's a, I don't know if he really planned it that way, but it's a good explanation of why over the past year or so we haven't seen a lot of stuff from Rob. It's very disappointing. I like to hear Rob's opinion, but I do respect uh, what he thinks and uh, we'll let him go there. Now, I want to say one more thing before we trot off here, guys. Uh, this giveaway that Nick and I are cooking up for you guys is getting better and better, and we are getting closer and closer to bringing it to you, and I'm sorry that it's we're doing this big buildup. That really wasn't the plan, but as we have uh, talked to sponsors and as we have talked to people, things have grown some uh i've told you guys that we've got kme on board they're uh gonna be filling out part of our grand prize package and now uh, you guys know best tech and we'll be part of it and we have other companies that have thrown in and wanted to be part and guys it's gonna be kind of epic i mean yeah, it's going to be a good one. Anyhow, you guys have a great day. Thanks for hanging out with me for a few minutes and talking about the news for the week and all the great videos that these creators do because, guys, go watch them. Not all of them are as tenacious as I am. I have uh, been at this for quite some time. I don't have a huge subscriber count, but I'm going to keep at it because I like the interaction with you guys, especially whenever I've got time to reply back to your comments and everything else because it's just a great thing to be part of this community. The entire community from the uh, knife user and customer uh, up through the manufacturing. And it's uh, I, I, I feel blessed to be where I'm at because I can touch each piece of the community and feel like I'm at least a little part of every piece, and it's just awesome. You guys are awesome, and have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time.